resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm sure that I'm dead. All right. My angel, my prince father, my father, my prince friend, my prince family, my height, my death. away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge underneath of the everlasting arms. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me though he die, yet shall he live. Whoever believes in me shall never die. With faith in Jesus Christ, we received the body of our sister Jean for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we pray with confidence to pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise us to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. O God of grace and glory, remember for you today, this day, our sister, Jean Anderson. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends. To know and to love as a companion on an earthly pilgrimage. And your boundless compassion consoles who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life. So in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To him, my faith looks up to thee.
us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. Strengthen this faith and hope in us all our days. May live as those who believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be seated for the first Bible reading, read by Cynthia Mendoza. A reading from the Word of God, written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangels call, and with the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clothes together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Remain seated as we led with the choir. We will join, of course, in the singing of the Cremon version of Psalm 23.
A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. To him, God moves in a mysterious way. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to, on behalf of the parish family here at Christ Church Parish Church, I want to offer our deepest condolences to the family of Jean Tennyson Seeley as we, yes, mourn the loss or passing of her, her life, but also use this opportunity to give thanks for her life and to reflect upon life in general. And therefore, today, because our sister was a member of this church and was a lifelong member of the church, in terms of being in St. Lawrence, as you can read for yourself in the bit. 
We therefore pray not only for you, but we are praying with you. We pray with you. As I said, I offer my condolences to the entire family. Now, as I said, she was a member of this church. And uh, as a member of this church, even probably growing up, she would have recognized the importance of her call, which started many, many years ago. In fact, I would suggest even before she knew it, in terms of the call from God to live according to his way and to his truth. And it started out by virtue of her, her baptism. When uh, someone dies, we do little things which remind us, hopefully, of the way forward in terms of our faith and to be reminded of those persons who will come after us. So, for example, during this service, because our sister was a member of this church, you will see during the prayers of the commendation, when we say a formal or final goodbye, that we will put water on the box, on her coffin. And some people wonder, why are you doing that? It's to remind us of something, as I said, that started way ago, at the beginning for many of us, and to a certain extent, why she was at the back of the church next to something which was the gateway into the church. That is, her coffin was by the font. Her coffin was by the font. That's how we enter the church. In Anglican churches and other churches, some other churches, the font is always by the door. The font is by the door to help us to understand that that is our gateway, our entrance into the family of God. I said earlier that we are praying not only for you, but we are praying with you. Our sister was part of this family, and she entered that family by virtue of her baptism. As I said, as a youngster growing up, and as the times, every time we gather for baptism, we sing this hymn, I was made a Christian when my name was given, one of their God's dear children and an heir to heaven. It's a children's hymn, but it reminds us of where we have come from, hopefully, or where we are going. I was made a Christian when my name was given, one of God's dear children and an heir to heaven. So what we do on the box is kind of remind us what had happened at the start, but this person remained faithful. Remain faithful. Sometimes, sometimes persons are at the box, sorry, at the, the font, and that's it. But here it is that we emphasize by placing water, there's a port on her, a baptism, we pour on again. But this person followed through. I was made a Christian when my name was given, not as past tense, but I lived it out. I lived it out right through to the end. That's what we're going to do, as I said, after this particular message. But I want to focus, though, this morning on something that jumped out to me when I saw the obituary in the paper in terms of names. I was made a Christian when my name was given. Her name is Jean, which is fair enough, but that middle name jumped out at me, Tennyson. Tennyson. I let, there's a story behind that particular name. But you know those people in the past who sometimes he used to put some names on children, which, as I say, you had to get the story behind that. But the story behind names, the story behind names is one thing, but names of themselves also can tell a story. Now, we heard from, as a reading, and I've had a chance to know him for many, many years, Carl Albess read the second lesson. Now, his surname talks about best. I don't know if he is the best. Are you the best? I don't know if he's the best. But it reminds us sometimes that we have to challenge to get better. Better in our relationships, especially in our Christian relationship. St. Jer Jerome makes the point, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. That we are always encouraged not to just sit back and say, well, I've arrived. We're on this journey 
on this journey which started, of course, many times for us when we were very small, but hopefully that we will endure to the end, to the end. Good, better, best, never let it rest. Now, there's a lot, great deal about surnames and names at present time. I don't know if you had a chance, I haven't got there yet, to go to the Golden Square Freedom Park, where persons are going to be there to see all kinds of things, but to see their names. No doubt, Harewood will be there. That's my surname. And no doubt, I know that Bess will be there, and Celie will be there, and hopefully we will look for our names. And the names, of course, will tell a story. Sometimes it tells a story of our origins. No doubt, if you're a Griffith, you're originally from the north. Because there's so many Griffiths in St. Lucie and in that particular area. So that folk may tell a story. That tell a story. But I want us, though, to focus not just on that name, but the name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. And therefore, let not our hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Which is our reading for today read, as I said, by Carlisle. And it speaks about a name which not only tells a story of a particular individual, but could be part of our story, our part of sister's story, in fact, a story for the whole world. And as I said, that name is Jesus. Jesus. Now, I have, as been a priest now for 30 years, in ministry for 31 as a deacon, I've baptized many, many children, many, many children, many children. Sometimes the names you can't even get pronounced. And therefore you ask the question sometimes, why this name? Or well, sometimes people join names together. Sometimes people will get a name that sounds okay. But in the time of Jesus, a name had significance in terms of its story, of its past, because it, it would mean something. And of course, in many cultures, our names are not just added on, but they mean something. And the name Jesus means the Lord saves. Yeshua. It means the Lord saves, which is very, very important. Very, very important. The Lord saves. But it's interesting to note that in the scriptures, even though that, that name is so important and it means the Lord saves, there are very few people who are actually call Jesus by his name. Most times people will call him master, teacher, okay, rabbi, teacher, whatever that. But very few people actually call him by his name. And there's one person who calls him by his name near the end of his life. It's not too late for him because he calls upon his name when therefore it matters. And I'm talking about in Luke chapter 24, where we have the situation of Jesus on the cross, beaten, bloodied looking defeated. And there are two people on either side. Both of them apparently, if you tell the story, are criminals. That's what the scripture said, they are criminals. And the story is told maybe that they had lived, they lived their life for making some serious choices which were bad choices. And yet, one, instead of embracing that, begins along with the crowd to curse Jesus, to rebuke Jesus, and says, save you, save others, or save me. And that's sometimes what we call upon Jesus' name in the wrong context. How many times have you heard people using Jesus' name as a curse word? Terrible. Or they call Jesus sometimes, or God, or whatever, to blind them by the words that they use. You've got to be very careful when we call upon the name. But this guy calls upon Jesus to come and save him when he's in trouble. Hasn't really focused his attention on Jesus, but now he's in trouble. He said, well, Jesus, help me. And sometimes we do that. But this other guy says, do you not fear God? We're supposed to be here. This is our story. But then he looks at Jesus. He acknowledges his own life of violence, probably, dishonesty, sin. And he looks and he says, Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He's one of the very few people who actually call Jesus by name. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says to him with love, today you will be with me in paradise. The Lord 
saves. And that's why, of course, in our life, whatever our name, whatever the story, whatever our surname, we are to call upon the name of Jesus, hopefully not in frustration, not in desperation, but in humility, in a recognition that our lives have not been lived the best, and it can't be lived the best, because without Jesus, we cannot live even a good life. And therefore, we need Jesus in our lives. And that's why, hopefully, hopefully that this particular service is an opportunity for us to reflect not only on the life of Jean Tennyson Seeley, but on our own life, and ask ourselves, where are we at along this journey? What are we calling upon? And are we calling upon that right, that lovely name, Jesus? And hopefully that not just be our surname that is attached to Jesus, but it will be Jesus who will be before us, Jesus who is after us, Jesus who is within us. And that we'll be able to live out that life. And that maybe, just not as a, as a, as a ritual, a symbol, but a, as a reality that I lived my life before it was too late. And therefore, for the words for that man who acknowledged his guilt, we too will hear those words from Jesus. Today, you will be with me, with me in paradise. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We'll stand. If it is our faith, if it is our faith as we call, say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator. Please be seated and bow our heads in prayer. We pray for those who mourn for Jean Tennyson. We commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God, our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all, and grant, Lord, your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy, may you be strengthened in our life, in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we command all people to your fit and fail in love, and then your will will be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying we share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy,
Fourteen, hark, hark, my soul.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death and giving life to those who are in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet in the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And to paradise may the angels lead you, if you'll come and may the martyrs receive you and bring you to the holy city.
take with them a record of their deeds. In the midst of life, you're in death, and whom can we turn to help but to you, Lord, are justly angered by our sins? Ensure us in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister, Jean Tennyson, and we commit her body to ground, earth to earth, ash to ashes, dust to dust. I beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister, Jean Tennyson, and we ourselves be found set to be in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise we humbly pray from the dead, the death of sin, the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved son shall there pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, our mediator and redeemer. Rest eternal ground to her, O Lord. May she know the faith of the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his faith to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift his countenance upon her and give her peace. Okay, we'll sing the hymns now. These are recorded. These are recorded. Come in. These recorded. Hymns will be, He leadeth me, forever the Lord, to God be the glory, it is well with my soul.
Under him was able to keep us from falling and present us faultless the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Savior, glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Sweet, by and by, by and by, we shall meet 
on that beautiful shore.
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may 